Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. Because semiconductors originated in the United States, the United States has a great advantage in chips and has many basic semiconductor technologies and patents. Basically, companies engaged in chips around the world cannot do without American technology, so chip sanctions can be implemented. The United States not only imposes chip restrictions on China, but also imposes chip sanctions on Russia after the outbreak of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. This is the so-called U.S. chip hegemony. However, news from Russia, SMIC, and NVIDIA has shown that the U.S. chip hegemony has begun to collapse. At the call of the United States, Russia has been completely blocked, and many technology giants have successively announced supply cuts. American giants such as Google, Microsoft, Apple, and Oracle have stopped services, and chip giants such as Qualcomm and Intel have stopped chip supply. There are also wafer foundry giants such as TSMC and Samsung that have stopped chip foundry, just to make Russia have no chips available. The lithography machine giant ASML is naturally no exception. Although Russia's local wafer foundry is very backward, it is said that there are only two chip manufacturers, one with a maximum mass production of 65 nanometers and the other with only 90 to 250 nanometers, but they are also inseparable from lithography machines. Lithography machines are crucial to chip manufacturing, but currently only four companies in three countries in the world can produce lithography machines for chip manufacturing namely ASML in the Netherlands, Nikon and Canon in Japan, and Shanghai Microelectronics in China. But the highest process of Shanghai Microelectronics in China is only 90 nanometers, so lithography machines are purchased from ASML, Nikon and Canon. However, after the United States imposed sanctions on Russia, Dutch and Japanese companies could not export advanced lithography machines to Russia, and even after sales maintenance was not allowed. In this case, Russia wants to solve the chip problem, and it can only develop its own lithography machines. In this regard, Russia naturally understands it very well. There have been news that it has started to develop lithography machines. Recently, Russian media released news that this is indeed the case. Russia has not only made up its mind to develop its own lithography machine, but the first lithography machine has been completed. Russian officials said that the first domestically produced lithography machine has been manufactured and is being tested to ensure the production of 350 nanometers chips. Although it is only a very mature process, it can still meet the needs of some automotive, energy and communications industries. Not only that, Russia also plans to achieve 130 nanometers lithography machines in 2026, followed by 65 nanometers lithography machines. The reason why Russia developed 350 nanometers to 65 nanometers lithography machines is that the demand for chips in this range is still very large, accounting for about 60% of the entire market. And this type of lithography machine will have a large demand in the global market for at least 10 years. In addition to China, Russia has joined the competition for lithography machines, so the situation of lithography machines controlled by the United States has begun to collapse. Let's talk about the second news. Recently, an authoritative market organization released a global wafer market research report in which the ranking of wafer foundry giants has changed. TSMC still ranks first in the world, 
Samsung ranks second, and SMIC ranks third. For many years before, SMIC ranked fifth in the world, and the third and fourth places UMC and global foundries occasionally changed. However, there was a major change in the first quarter of this year. SMIC's market share suddenly increased, and its ranking entered the top three in the world for the first time. In terms of revenue, TSMC grew by 12.9% year-on-year in the first quarter, Samsung grew by 2% year-on-year, and SMIC grew by 19.7% year-on-year. SMIC can grow thanks to the recovery of the domestic market, and Chinese companies prefer domestic manufacturing. It is worth mentioning that SMIC has surpassed the U.S. company Global Foundries, which shows that U.S. restrictions cannot stop the development of Chinese chips. The third news is that NVIDIA has been cold in the mainland market. The sales of the AI chip H20 series specially supplied to the mainland market are not good, and NVIDIA has to lower the price. This is because the United States continues to increase restrictions, and NVIDIA has revised its AI chips for the second time. After the first revision, the A800 and H800 had good sales because of their functions, but they were soon restricted from shipment by the United States. After the H20 series was revised again, mainland manufacturers did not buy it because the functions were too castrated. On the one hand, mainland manufacturers increased their self-research of AI chips, and on the other hand, they began to purchase domestic chips, especially Huawei's Ascend series. The point is that the price of Ascend 910B is similar to that of NVIDIA H20, but the performance is better. So there are not many people interested in buying H20, but they are scrambling to buy 910B. So the global AI giant NVIDIA has to cut prices. From the above three news, it can be seen that the US chip restrictions not only failed to achieve the purpose of obstruction, but also aroused the determination of many places to make breakthroughs in self-development. Russia's lithography machine has made breakthroughs, and China's chips have risen rapidly, while US companies have suffered more losses. In this regard, some foreign media directly commented that the US chip hegemony has begun to collapse, and the US chip restrictions will ultimately end in failure.